Christopher was upset. At my brother Alex's wedding, my dad publicly insulted me, saying I was a disgrace to the family and that I wasn't wanted there. Alex didn't defend me, and I felt like leaving in anger. But then, a staff member asked for help with a problem, and I ended up surprising my dad in a way he never expected. My name is Christopher, and I have one brother, Alex, our dad, who is a lawyer, always pushed Alex more than me. Growing up, we had no free time because we were always studying or going to lessons. Even playing with friends wasn't allowed. I tried hard to meet my dad's expectations and to be like Alex, whom I looked up to, but no matter how hard I worked, I always felt inferior to Alex and disappointed my dad. One important moment in my life was when I took an entrance exam for a prestigious private school. I knew it was a long shot, but I tried anyway. Unfortunately, I failed. After that, my dad mostly ignored me and focused on Alex instead. This was really painful for me. The only person who seemed to care was my mom. When she asked if I was okay, I just said I was fine. I decided I would make my own path. After high school, I left home without telling my dad or Alex. I only left a note for my mom because I needed to get away. I found a job at a hotel where I could also live. I applied right away and got the job. Since I started working there, I felt much happier. Life isn't suffocating like it was at home, and I can focus on what I want to do. My manager, Michael, is very strict. I often made mistakes and had to apologize a lot. I was just a high school graduate and didn't know much about the job, so I got scolded frequently, but I worked hard, and Michael actually praised me when I did things well, which encouraged me. One significant event happened at the start of the new year. It's the busiest time for the hotel. After finishing my training, I finally got to work alone. That year, the hotel was more crowded than usual. Guests either ate in a big dining room or had their meals delivered to their rooms, making it really hectic. Although I was a rookie and caused some problems, I tried my best. Then, something unexpected happened on New Year's Day. A co-worker got sick with the flu, and we were short-staffed. I worked really hard, probably twice as much as I was supposed to, just when I thought things couldn't get worse. The kitchen sink pipe broke during dinner service, and of course, no plumber was available on New Year's Day. It was a huge mess, and Michael, our manager, was getting more frustrated. I decided to take a bold step and told Michael I could help. I'll try to fix the plumbing, I told Michael. He and the others looked confused, but he didn't have a choice. With a hopeful tone, he asked, Christopher, can you do it? I got to work on the plumbing. Actually, I had gone to a science-focused high school after failing to get into the private school my dad wanted. There. I learned about engineering and got some hands-on experience. After about half an hour, I managed to fix the pipe. Michael, it's fixed, I called out. He rushed over and turned on the faucet. Water flowed out strongly, and everyone smiled. Great job, Christopher, you're my pride and joy, Michael said. It felt amazing to be praised by him. We made it through New Year's Day at the hotel, and I'll never forget the fulfillment I felt that day. It really shaped who I am today. Fifteen years have passed since then and I fully adapted to my job. One day, I received a letter from my mom after a long time. It turned out that Alex was getting married. I keep in touch with mom a few times a year, but I haven't spoken to dad or Alex in years. The letter asked me to attend Alex's wedding. I felt a wave of emotions. Why should I go? I wrote back to my mom, saying I couldn't attend, but another letter came quickly, begging me to make it. I reluctantly agreed to go. The wedding would be at a luxury hotel. Alex's bride was a young woman from a prestigious company, and the guest list was huge, much larger than the New Year celebration at my hotel. It all seemed very lavish, just like Alex and Dad. On the wedding day, I wore an old suit and headed to the venue. I checked in at the reception and was led to the waiting room. There were already many people there, all looking like high society folks. I spotted Alex's bride in the back, a woman with long, beautiful hair, feeling a bit out of place and with no one to talk to. I started people watching. Suddenly, I locked eyes with two men I recognized, Dad and Alex. They looked unhappy. Dad approached me and asked, Why are you here? It was the first time I had heard his deep voice in years. Is it so wrong to celebrate Alex's wedding? Oh, by the way, congrats, Alex, I said. Alex looked conflicted. He probably couldn't openly thank me in front of Dad. What have you been up to all these years? Probably some worthless job, Dad said. Just then. Mom rushed over to us and said, Come on, Christopher is here to celebrate. No need to be. Mom was upset and tried hard to convince Dad, but her voice was lost in his anger. Enough, Mom, 
Christopher, let me make this clear, you're a disgrace. I don't want you ruining Alex's celebration. Get out. Hearing this made me even angrier. I didn't even want to be at Alex's wedding, and yet I was being treated like this. This is why I didn't want to come in the first place. Fine, I'm leaving, I said. I turned my back to exit the waiting room. I grabbed my things and was about to walk out when I heard someone call my name. Please wait. A wedding staff member rushed over. Uh, it seems we have an unexpected guest for today's wedding. We're short on seats and food. Everyone in the waiting room looked worried. Emily, the wedding planner, and the parents-in-law need help. What does this have to do with me? I thought, feeling all my frustrations against Dad and Alex bubbling up. But then I remembered the good times Alex and I had when we were kids. He always made time to play with me during study breaks. If I just walked away, I would be no better than Dad. I turned back to the staff member. Can you take me to Emily? The staff member looked relieved and led me back into the waiting room, to the same place I had just been kicked out of. In the center of the room, Emily, Dad, and the bride's father all looked worried as I approached. My eyes met Dad's, and he asked, Why has Christopher returned? He looked furious, but before he could say more, Emily spoke up. General manager, please help us. Dad's eyes widened in shock. You see, I explained. I'm now the general manager for all the hotels in my company. When I first joined, we were just starting to expand. Now, we have hotels and wedding venues all over the country, and this hotel we're in right now is one of the ones I oversee. I think I can handle this, I said calmly. Dad, I'm busy right now. We'll talk later. I turned back to Emily. Relax. Get the seats and everything else ready. I'll take care of the food. The stress faded from Emily's face. Understood. I'll leave the food to the general manager and handle the rest. With that, Emily rushed off. Now it was my turn. Everyone in the waiting room was watching me as I left the room and headed to my friend, Chef Jackson. This hotel has a high-end restaurant, and Jackson is a good friend of mine. Hey, you in? I called out. After some rustling, Jackson appeared. Christopher. What brings you here? He asked. I'm here for my brother's wedding, but we're short one meal. Can you help? Sure thing. I'll whip something up, he replied. Much appreciated. I owe you dinner. I'm looking forward to it. I said as I returned to the waiting room after taking care of a few things. The guests had already moved to the ceremony area, leaving only my parents and the bride's parents behind. Problem solved. We've got an extra meal coming, I announced. Upon hearing this, my mom and the bride's parents looked relieved, while dad had a conflicted expression. Christopher, thank you so much. Because of you, the celebration can go on successfully, he said. It's all in a day's work as a general manager, I replied, and with that, we all entered the ceremony hall. The lights dimmed, and the groom and bride walked in. Alex looked incredibly handsome, and his bride was stunning. The ceremony proceeded, and then it was meal time. I made sure everyone was served and breathed a sigh of relief as the ceremony concluded successfully. The faces of the groom and bride were filled with happiness. After the ceremony, we had a little talk with Alex's family and the bride's family. They were especially grateful to me, and I was thanked profusely. Christopher, thank you so much. We had the best day ever, all thanks to you. No worries. Wishing you all the happiness in the world. I replied. I glanced at Dad and Alex, both had complicated expressions. Mom walked over to me. Christopher, you did wonderfully. Thank you. Dad and Alex want to speak to you. I looked back at Dad and Alex. Alex spoke first, Christopher, you saved us. Thank you, and I'm sorry for everything. As long as I could help Alex, everything was good. Dad lowered his head without saying anything, he seemed to have no words. That was fine with me. After all, I had never become like Dad. Just then, my cell phone buzzed in my pocket. It was the manager from a hotel in the next town over. More work was coming my way, but I enjoyed my job, so I had no complaints. All right, I'm off to work. You two take care, I said. I probably wouldn't see Alex or Dad again, so I left the room without looking back.
Three days after Alex's wedding, I was enjoying a rare day off. I sat on the sofa, sipping warm coffee, my happy time. Suddenly, the doorbell rang. I wondered who it could be as I went to answer it. To my surprise, Alex was standing there. Alex! What brings you here? I asked. Sorry, I got your address from mom. I wanted to talk to you. Christopher wants to talk to me? I thought. Maybe he came to say thanks again. Well, do you want to come in? Sorry for the mess. If it's okay with you, I'd like that, he replied with a forced smile. I invited him in and served him coffee. Thank you. Smells good, he said as he took a slow sip. Seems like we both enjoy coffee. So, what did you want to talk about? Alex put down his cup and looked me straight in the eye. I'm really sorry for everything, he said. I was puzzled. He came all this way just to say that? A phone call would have sufficed. Hey, it's all right, I replied. Actually, I came today because I want to share some things with you, Alex continued. If you don't mind, I'd like you to hear my grievances. Grievances? I was left speechless. Alex began to speak slowly. You might think I'm the older brother who can do anything, but I envy you, Christopher. You're free from dad's pressures, living your own life away from our parents. I couldn't find the words. I had no idea Alex felt that way. A silence filled the room, and I felt somewhat guilty. After all, I had unintentionally shifted all of dad's expectations onto Alex. Choosing my words carefully, I said, Alex, I'm sorry. I never considered that you were struggling too. My brother smiled weakly. That's just it, it's not your fault, Christopher. I was the weak one. Hearing that, I finally found my words. Alex, I think you've been through struggles I can't even imagine. I truly admire that, I said, but I also want you to know about me. I took a deep breath, pausing to collect my thoughts. Alex listened intently, not saying anything. Breaking away from my parents and becoming independent wasn't easy either. The beginning was really tough. Yeah, that's true. We both have our share of hardships, Alex responded. It seemed he had more to say. I didn't consider myself wise enough to convince him, nor did I know the right words. So, I said what I honestly felt. To be honest, I think you should do what you really want to do, Alex. Don't worry about dad. After thinking about my words, Alex stood up, with a relieved look on his face. You're right, Christopher. You've helped clear up my inner turmoil. Thank you. No, thank you, Alex, for coming over, I replied as I escorted him to the door. I'll come by for coffee again, he said, leaving with a natural smile on his face. A month later, I received a letter from Alex. He had been working as a lawyer to meet dad's expectations, but decided to quit and start training as a glass craftsman. He even met his girlfriend at a glass workshop he had been attending as a hobby. I'm sorry for doubting you, Alex, I wrote back. As expected of you. It seemed he had been disowned by dad, but Alex's wife was supportive, and he was full of motivation. Dad remained the same, but I knew Alex would pull through. Since then, our family started interacting more. There really is something special about the bond between siblings. As I was lost in thought, my mobile phone alarm went off. Wow, it's already that time. I realized I had to leave the house. Another day awaited me on the path I chose and the job I loved.